like there's litter everywhere mm. so what we do as a company is like we tell all our senior guys okay we give them a 20 liter waterproof bag so whenever they're going along the trail like they're picking up all the waste bags it almost has always been my goal to make it one of the adventure brand well when i first wanted to give this a go my parents were like ah oh, you left signature so you're doing this again like you're not gonna do this you know so that was really tough on me but i thought like i'm just gonna shut everything off I'm just gonna keep doing it so i had to be persistent i had to be patient uh, i had to read a lot of books it takes years and years of in years of practice if you want to be a master of something you know like you want to reach the clinical point they say you have to give 10,000 hours, I think it's even more, it doesn't stop at 10,000 hours. I have the heart and soul to explore things. It's going to be a lot of downfalls, keep going, and if, it, if that's your story, live it. <laughs> live your story. Yeah. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of You Inspire Podcast. Thank you so much for everyone who's subscribed to our channel so far. And for those of you who's recently subscribed to our channel, welcome and thank you so much to you as well. It means a lot to me. Today, we have um, a very interesting guest. He is a passionate adventure enthusiast. He likes to travel, he does expedition, and he's very obsessed about delivering the best the highest quality of service is um, also you know led trekkings uh, in various parts of Nepal for example uh, to Mera Peaks, Everest Base Camp, Annapurna Circuit, Upper Mustang just to name a few. He is the, uh, the founder and uh, CEO of Namas Adventure. He is none other than Business Guru. Business, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Quite an intro introduction. <laughs> <laughs> I try my best. You yeah. know, it, it's, al it's always good to make our guest feel honored and you know welcome. Mm -hmm. How do you like uh, in our studio? It's nice. It's nice. Yeah, it's home. It's home. Cos cozy and homely. Like it's really good. Yeah. yeah we try to do that. Mm -hmm. And this is our new. Um, oh, okay. Bonsai tree that. Uh, Hello, plant. <laughs> my wife got for as a present. Oh, okay. So we're trying nice. to make good use of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I think it's very minimal and nice, so uh, it's quite good, yeah. Every time I look at your post in your videos, I know, mm -hmm. you're always traveling, you go, you put post pictures and videos of this amazing place, and I look at it, I was like, that's an amazing place, and I'd love to be there, and I'm, it's, I, I, I'm kind of jealous, mm -hmm. and you know, man, you're <laughs> living the dream. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's something I've always wanted to do, so yeah. slowly it's coming into, I mean, picture, but mm, yeah, I can understand why, like, uh, like I, I get this a lot when people yeah, say, oh, I'm always... People tell you, like... Yeah, 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 there's a lot of people telling me, like, oh, your posts are so amazing and this and that, but for me, it's like, it's, it's just part of life mm. right now, so I yeah. I think it kind of reminds us, like, you know... Because we're from Nepal, and then we haven't been to so many places in mm -hmm. Nepal. We ha we've hardly uh, been to like we've, we've been to less than five percent of the, the amazing places. Yeah, in I Nepal think that was pretty much me as well. Yeah. Uh, and when you see pictures and videos of amazing places mm -hmm. in Nepal, you're like, I haven't been there. I want to go there. You know, <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah, I can understand because yeah. um, I was the same when I was just like before moving to England. Like it was pretty much the same. I used to go to like small hikes and stuff, but never explored far into far distance of Nepal. Mm. So, uh, like once I started Namas, I could really see see uh, what was out there in Nepal, and it's it's, it's pretty revealing. It's it's very enlightening, like what Nepal really has. And I think there's there's more places to go, but mm. I would love to talk more about that later on. Mm -hmm. 
tell us how is life right now? How is life for you? How is it? Life is yeah. good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> I can't ask for anything more. Yeah, yeah. it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to ask was, um, you know, are you because you you're CEO and founder of mm-hmm. Namaste Adventure, and you're also uh, into traveling and adventure stuff. Would you call yourself an entrepreneur first or an adventurer? Which are you? I'm an ad- adventurer by heart, so yeah. that, that's that's first. Yeah. How did you like? What? How did you get into it? Why are you so passionate about adventure? Oh, okay. So I think this came after a very long reflection mm-hmm. around 2015, because before that I used to travel for the sake of traveling. You know, like I used to go on different places, like. Like, there was a lot of aspects of traveling, like some some were like city tours, some were like going on longer treks. I didn't really have a thing like okay, I I I love this so much, but but once I started to reflect on twenty fifteen, like what do I really love about this? Like this, it's travel, but what do I really love about travel? Mm. And once I, uh, after that, I went to entrepreneur circuit to reflect more and see more. And after that, I was, I was hooked. Like, okay, this this is this is something that I really love, and I can keep keep doing it for the rest of my life. Yeah. Well, when was that? When did you go to Anupam Circuit? So this was in twenty fifteen September. No, March. Yeah, March. Yeah, yeah. So that was like um, you know something that ignited you know that, that yeah, experience yeah. itself but was something that ignited you. But even before that, like I've been to Anupam base camps, Pune and stuff. Yeah. But then it was like. I want to go to these places, but I didn't really have the agenda, you know, like, okay, do I really love this? Mm. But once I went to Entrepreneur Circuit, I, I was blown away. I was like, yeah, you, you got to do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I want to go there as well. <laughs> you should, man. It's one yeah. of the best trekking, like, so far. I've been to so many treks in Nepal. Uh, personally, like, Entrepreneur Circuit, like, it, it's, it's the one for me. Yeah. Okay. Good. That will be on my bucket list then. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you, whereabouts are you from Nepal? I am like my family's from Pokhara, but I grew up like I grew up in Kathmandu. I studied there from grade one on all the way up till twelve, mm. and after that I moved to England. Mm. How was your childhood? You been, it's been all right. It was good, yeah. yeah. I, we, we stayed in a hostel, so yeah. um, like since your mom and dad is away with army mm. and work, so we were in hostel. It was a good life, yeah. You had that bond with with the, yeah. with the boys. Were you like, adventurous back then when you were like in school? College? Oh yeah, yeah. So every uh, you know, like we had this a month Dasai holiday, mm. and uh, during schools, like you were pretty much restricted to, on how you could travel. But once I went to college, like we we, we got our own bikes, mm. and after that, like every week we were going yeah. into different parts of Nepal. So like what well, outside of Kathmandu? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I knew like I was going to come to England, so I told myself like, okay, these two years is is the time like you can really enjoy your your teenage life in Nepal. Mm. So we had bikes, we were uh, and all that. We had a group of friends, so yeah, we made the most out of it. Mm. <laughs> S- share with us some of your like the amazing experience that you've had. You know, you talked about the entrepreneur circuit. Mm-hmm. Um, some amazing breathtaking experience, or it could be just like funny experience that you've had while leading a trip, or you know, while traveling yourself. Anything that comes to your mind, like if someone told you, like, what's the best thing that's happened to you during your travel? Ah, okay. Um. So, well, there's two things that that mm. I that I can really reflect on. So one is the stories part, like when you go to th- these different places, like you hear all these amazing stories, as it, like it blows your mind away. So um, I went to Upper Mustang, mm, 20, this was in 2019, March, yeah. So it's, so the, the idea of Upper Mustang came to me when I first did the entrepreneur circuit, because once you do the entrepreneur circuit, you see the different sides of Nepal. So one, one part is like all the green bits. So once you cross the pass and you go all the way down to Mustang, then suddenly like on top of the, from, from the top of the pass, you can see Mustang Valley all the way down and it's all barren. It's like uh, all these grand canyons and mm. almost, almost like, like, the, the, like Mad, Mad Max. Yeah, yeah. It has that vibe. So I was really intrigued like, okay, what's happening here? I saw all the green bits now and there is all these dry bits in Nepal. 
So after what four years, I went back because uh, I had always had it in my mind like I need to go and see this place because it's it's so interesting, and I have uh, like few of my friends are from that area as well. So I I, I asked them about what what's it like, how the people like. So yeah, I got a chance and we did a like, we made a project about okay, let's make a video here and uh, as well as explore the places. So um, there were a lot of stories like. Very religious, spiritual stories, mm. and because Upper Mustang is like sort of like very close to Tibet, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So it has a massive uh, Buddhist influence, mm. and all the stories you hear, like it, it's so interesting. Is like they had their own king. That's that's mm. one interesting bit. Yeah. And so they had their own palace, and where, in, where is that? The you know, like on the on the side of the hills, there's like um, there's caves, caves. Yeah. So uh, National Geography, they did a. So, a research. So they found around ten thousand caves. Yeah, I think and they found like scriptures and stuff. Yeah, in yeah. There, so it's still, it's, and they still, they're still saying we haven't found so many. This is the only thing they, they like. Ten thousand is the one they could find up to that project uh, timeline. Yeah. But after that, like they said, they, this, they're definitely sure like there's more, mm. and those are like three to four thousand years old. Wow. So crazy. So we went to one of those caves, like, just to explore. You went inside? Yeah, yeah. So, like, you can actually go in. It's one of the uh, sightseeing places in Upper Mustang. Is it protected by the government or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, you need to pay, not, not much, like 200 rupees. You go and see and you climb all these ladders and there's this small, like, bunkers type of, like, five stories, mm. um, caves. Right. It, it's crazy, like, and... They show you places like, oh, they used to put all the rice in here, yeah. and they used to meditate here. And it's not even like, yeah, you have to crouch down now, it's not, you can't even stand up in there. Oh. And it's all dusty, and it, it's, it's, it's surreal, like, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. We, we could probably keep on talking about it for yeah. hours and hours. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to go back to, you know, Namas. Um, how, did, how did Namas begin? Tell me the story behind it. Okay, so before this, yeah. I was involved in... Uh, night clubbing events and events management, basically. So, I I did that for four years, five years, and I had to look deep in me and ask, like, is this something you want to do for the rest of your life? Because it was affecting a lot of um, things in my life. You know, like, uh, like it was pretty much like eighty percent of it was night clubbing events. So. It was drinking, it was music, you know, obviously there was the work of, you know, like, like with the getting people, you know, marketing sales, all this kind of stuff, yeah. promotion, yeah, all this kind of are there. And people, like you, people don't really see that, people just see the final bit of, oh, this event and they're just having fun and, I mean, of course we had fun. But, uh, like, I did that for five, four or five years and after that once I had to really look deep in me, I thought like, no, I can't, I can't do this for the rest of my life. Mm. So, so and I took a year break, I traveled a lot then, mm. and I gave, uh, like, this idea of Namas was always in my head, like, not Namas, but adventure travel, so I, I gave it a go, and then after that, uh, Namas, even the name came mm. from home, like Namaste, so I just removed the T E because I wanted everything, like, I wanted to have it from my, like, our origin. Yeah. So Namaste is, is something you get once you go in Nepal. So yeah, that's how Namaste started, and here we are. Mm. <laughs> so you you started Namaste and you were like part of the event organizing, like signature, I think. Mm -hmm. And have you have you been involved in any other business ventures apart from those two? Mm. Have I been in any? Oh yeah, like uh, once uh, one of my friends he gave me this idea of. Mm. Uh, <laughs> like uh, selling, you know, saris. Mm. He said, like, yeah, there's a lot of girls in UK, you know, like, and you've got ties in Nepal, so why don't you go and sell saris? I <laughs> did you do it? Yeah, I, that was a very desperate move because I was. It was in 2015 when I was I wasn't doing anything, and I gave it a go. You know, we we, we bought a stock of um, I don't know 20, 30, and it was completely out of my area. Like I have did, did no you, idea. Did you sell it all, or you still got no, some no. left? Um, and I think I managed to sell four or five. Yeah. After that, the rest of it I sent it back. I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. 
I don't know anything about this. So, has entrepreneurship or being a business man has that been like into uh, a passion of you uh, from like when you're young, or is it something that came later on in life? I th- like uh, when I was young, I was always telling myself, "I'm not gonna do business." <laughs> I was that sort of guy. I wanted to be a pilot. I think. Wow. Yeah. What did you study in like college, university? I did business management. Oh, okay. So, and when I came to England, and a, and a year later, like um, mm. all my friends from Signature, they're like, "Let's do events," you know. Like, uh, we've got a good friend, like friendship foundation, so we can probably do something. And once I got into Signature, and after it went on for one or two years, that's what I really felt like. Oh, I really love this, you know. Mm. So having something of your own. All the process, all the things I have to deal with. Mm. It's it's a stress, but it's something I love. So entrepreneurship, like I think, came only later. Later, yeah, yeah. What drives you um, to like to to do namas and to like to do business? What drives? You? Is there anything that inspires you? Yeah, I think one thing I w- I would really say is uh, I think people have for me one thing that's really important is like people have to be free. So I think it's something to do with freedom. Freedom. So yeah, being, so, so having your own, like setting your own time schedule, or no? It's, it's. I think it's for me. It's bigger than that. Yeah. It's just more like you. You only got one life. Yeah. You know. So okay. okay. So it's like working for yourself rather than like yeah, for someone yeah. else. Yeah. I mean, like you. Obviously, when even at numbers, like people works for me, but for me, it's more like you, you've got to live your story. Mm-hmm. There's something. You need to have. That's like, your tagline, isn't it? That's that's the tagline. Lead yeah. your story. I think that 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 even that came, yeah. came from like from my own personal mm. motto. Let's say, yeah, live your story. Yeah. Now, can you think of a difficult situation or different difficult experience that mm. in your personal life that you've had experience and overcome? Can you think of anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there is when you are. Especially with entrepreneurship mm. um, and being the only son of family, responsibility, there's a lot of responsibilities which like even if I want to, due to my circumstances, like I'm not able to take the full responsibility because I'm still struggling with, with numbers, you know, mm. although I'm loving it, but that's, that's, that's the business part of it is still there. so. Um, well, when I first wanted to give this a go, my parents were like, "Ah, oh, you left Signature, so you're doing this again. Like, um, you're not gonna do this, you know." So that was really tough on me. But I thought, like, I'm just gonna shut everything off. I'm just gonna keep doing it. What, what? How did you deal with it? How did you overcome? What was your mindset that let you overcome those challenges? Oh, uh, so one thing I know about about myself is like. Um, um, I'm very persistent and mm. like I have a pa- like I think I, I've learned patience like with uh, with life I mean not not with life but with whatever I was doing before so that I think at least gave me some idea of what you're getting into once you start a business so I had to be persistent I had to be patient uh, I had to read a lot of books mm. because personal development yeah 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 even with yeah. that and you know, uh, not just uh, hardcore business stuff, but with like, okay, uh, if you want to make changes, what sort of things you need to look look up to, you know, like mm-hmm. like short term goals, long long term goals. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think having a goal and dream is great. Yeah. But you need to work on it. Yeah. S- learn the skills and capabilities. So you need yeah. to increase your capabilities yeah, to yeah. match your dream and goals. So mm-hmm. in learning, reading, yeah, um, growing is that. So I think that's part of. Life itself, it and is, especially, it is. is very important in entrepreneurship, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, I have a book, like, loads of books in the house already. Like, I, like once I, every now and then, when I go back and say, like, oh, I've collected so many books already. Mm. It's good. <laughs> Let's kind of change the topic a little bit yeah. um, and talk about tourism uh, in general. Uh, obviously, tourism plays a big big role in Nepal's mm-hmm. in Nepal and in Nepal's economy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on Visit Nepal 2020 and why is it important? 
Uh, is it Nepal 2020? I think it's, it's, it is really important because uh, this is the first visit Nepal we've had after the earthquake. Mm. Um, and economy was like, I don't know, I think it puts a pressure on Nepal as well to do things better, you know. So especially like, let, let's say Kathmandu is an entry point. Mm -hmm. And I heard like there's been improvement in the airport now because that's one of the places like, I don't for me, it doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you improve at the airport? Mm. Oh, that's the first impression you exactly. get when you come into Nepal, isn't it? Yeah. So, th this was a story I heard like back two, three, two years ago, I think. I, I, once I entered the airport, I was like, oh, there's some changes. There's this carpets now. It's a bit cleaner. Mm. I went and I went, one of my friends came to pick me up. I told him like, oh, it's a bit cleaner, you know? Mm. And he told me like, someone from Australia, a guy who, ha a Nepalese guy who has a cleaning company, came here and he offered the government, okay, I'm going to clean the airport for you. And he basically did it all for free. Oh, yeah. And he told them, okay, if you need it next time, come back and we'll do it again. Like, just, just tell us. And I was like, I was shocked. So actually someone, for, I, when I told my friends and they told me someone guided, I thought it was a joke. Mm. But when I asked all the guys, they were all like, yeah, that, that really happened. So in terms of visiting about 2020, of course, like we, we are promoting all the um, adventure sites of Nepal as well, which is mostly saturated in the eastern and the western, but the far west mm. is kind of neglected. And it has to do with finances and everything, but it gives an opportunity for the country to, you know, like mm. tell all the people like, oh, we've got, there's something in the far. Do you yeah. want to go? You know, like a gov government can, like, miss, let's say, reduce the permit fees just to give people a taste or even Tarai has its own beauty. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. It's, so you, it's, you, you already touched on some of the things that I was mm -hmm. going to ask you. So I was going to ask you what's lacking uh, in Nepal tourism, especially in your sector, adventure sector, what's lacking and what can be done? Oh, you, th there's a lot of things that can be done. So one thing is, uh, uh, I would say it's slowly happening, but it can happen better. So, especially with guides and Sherpas, like, they're one of the best, like, if you want to look at them physically and stuff, but everything can be enhanced and improved, you know. So, uh, guides can have better trainings, especially uh, with uh, language as well, because that's one of the biggest struggle, like, uh, guides are having, you know. So, when there's off, off season, maybe they can take classes and improve their English or whatever foreign language they're in. And just the way of customer service and stuff. And this problem with sustainable and, you know, all these responsible yeah. things like there's litter everywhere. Mm -hmm. So what we do as a company is like we tell all our senior guides, okay, we give them a 20 liter waterproof bag. So whenever they're going along the trails, like they're picking up all the waste bags and on their first stop, let's say the first uh, village, we all dump it in, in in, in a bin. Mm. So imagine if everyone does that. Mm -hmm. It won't take like it won't even take a year to clean all the whole trail. Exactly, that's a very good initiative. Yeah, uh, that, that's something we do. Uh, uh, something like we really advocate is like Porter Spay because they are all they are the most down on the uh, like the, the chain line. Mm. So what like what I found was like they only pay twelve dollars a day and they're carrying thirty kilos. Imagine us doing that that yeah. working here. It's it's unimaginable. So yeah. uh, I told my team like, listen, this is a bit too much. Uh, we, we need to push it to twenty dollars. So we've started only already doing it from like two three years ago already. So you're paying them more. Yeah. So, and I think we want to raise it to twenty five or thirty in coming years, but it all has to depend with um, how much we raise the price, the amount of customers we get. So it's it's a very stra strategical decision, but so far like twenty twenty dollars is. Are are other companies following? I'm not sure. I haven't heard any. Yeah. I think that's a good example that you're setting in the industry and in, in your sector. You know, raising yeah. porters' pay. You know, making sure that you're being sustainable when you're traveling. Mm -hmm. You know, cleaning out the litter. That's very uh, a good example of what a company should aspire to be as a. Yeah, for me, like it doesn't even take. It's not even hard. Like 
it's not a very tough thing to do. Yeah. It's like you just simple things. To, it's know. a very simple thing. Yeah. It, it doesn't cost you a lot of money. You know. Exactly. It's something. You you, tr you keep the trail clean. Like people like clean things, you know. Like keep the trails clean. It's it's not a. You don't have to do a rocket science. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> so it's just to. I don't know. I mean, it surprised me when people were not thinking this. I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll do it then. Great. Mm -hmm. So let's switch the, switch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a rapid fire question now. Mm -hmm. How it works is I'm going to ask you. Um, I'm going to just uh, say a net random word or phrase, and mm -hmm. then you say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. First word that comes to your mind. Okay. So ready? Mm -hmm. Adventure. Ad Nepal. <laughs> Nepal. Your favorite book. Uh, Steve Jobs by Walter Isaac Walters. Yeah. Hate. Uh, painful. Love. Life. Business. Passion. Passion. Is yeah. It? Health. Mm, health. Well, happiness. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Death. Uh, um, it's prominent. Passion. Love. Go, uh, God. Your belief. Money. Your abilities. Food. Food. Uh, nutrition. <laughs> Brexit. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> Favorite person. Parents. A mom and dad, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the end of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to go for long. Yeah. Well, I have long, but uh, I'm going to cut it there. Yeah, sure. What is one of the most valuable lessons that you've learned in your life, would you say? Mm. It's um, if you're, if you know you like you're doing something well, uh, you know, like it speaks from your heart, mm. uh, to do it no matter what anyone says. It takes years and years of, in years of practice to even like, get a good grip, grip on things so I'm, I'm still in fourth year mm. and I'm, I'm learning so much and there's, there's tons of things to be learned so just give it time be patient you know like and learn 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 learn, learn. you can refine it if you want to be a master of something you know like you want to reach the pinnacle point mm. they say you have to give 10,000 hours I think it's even more uh, it doesn't stop at 10,000 hours so yeah just keep on going mm. don't give up it's block all the noise yeah just follow your heart reflect keep going <laughs> good stuff <laughs> yeah what advice would you give to a younger generation who wants to go into like say similar field as you into traveling tourism uh, adventure uh i mean just ha have the heart and soul to explore things and if you know that's right mm -hmm. then do it i mean we need plenty of ideas and expressions and creativity in this field mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's lacking obviously yeah. because mountaineering is a very niche niche sport and it's an adventure is niche as well don't be afraid by nature it's you're meant to go on adventures so there's going to be a lot of downfalls keep going and if it's if that's your story live it <laughs> live your story yeah um what who is your inspiration what do you have a, like a role model or mentor that you follow look up to don't really have a mentor, uh, but like people, obviously, when I read like Steve Jobs' book, I think that made that made so much sense. Like you need to think different. Mm. Uh, yeah, and what well, people like Elon Musk, something you know, even mm. he can be crazy and do things, and you know, if you don't have the idea of exploring, then who is going to do it, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, Steve Jobs and Elon Musk, something that comes to my mind, yeah, it's good, yeah, who, what can you be grateful of right now? Oh, uh, like, having the space to explore my passion, mm. uh, like, that's, I can be totally mm. grateful What to kind of impact do you want to make in the world? <clears throat> oh, okay, I would like, I want, I want to, like whatever I'm doing, like I want mm. peop I want to inspire people to follow the dreams. That, that's something I want to tell them. Like no matter how hard or easy it might get, yeah, 
your, your dreams is yours, so just leave it. Mm. Um, what is your, let's say, a future, your vision, your future, like five, ten years from now, where, like, what's your vision? Oh, you so, see yourself? for me, like, Nomos has always been my goal to make it one of the adventure brand. Mm. So let's say when we talk about adventure clothes like North Face or Patagonia comes to our mind. Uh, when, so when, let's say in 10 years, that's one of the goals I want to have, like when people think about adventure, like Nomos, Nomos. it's a synonym, you know, like mm. it's a lot of work, but that's a goal I want to have. That's good. Yeah. How, where can people find you? How can they get in touch with you? Oh, so usually uh, social media. Yeah. Uh, we have a website like nomosadventure.com. Yeah. What's your social media like? Um, you name okay, so this is Kurum. Personally or the company one? Both. Okay, if, if so like, if, like someone's watching and they find you very inspiring and oh, okay, they, so they want to get in touch with I, you. I'm pretty much active on Facebook and Instagram. So this is GRG. Yeah. Uh, and in Instagram is BSCS GRG or LinkedIn as well, like the more professional side. Yeah. <laughs> But if you want to look up into my company, it's um, Namas Adventure, Namas Adventure. In both in Instagram, uh, Facebook. Yeah, we are not pretty... Uh, or Google it. No. Yeah, yeah Google. So just Google yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or Siri, or whatever, <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think we are in Alexa <laughs> yet, <laughs> but we will be. Yeah, it's good. Well, uh, you know, you, you've got a pretty inspiring story and pretty fascinating in it. Throughout my conversation with you, I... Uh -huh. I realized like you're really, really into learning, growing, um, you know, doing what you love. Mm -hmm. uh, you talk about consistency and patience yeah. a lot, uh, which is very important as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You know, I really, I've really had an amazing um, chat with you, or conversation with you. So uh, is so is here. Thanks for coming saying, down and you know saying yes to our. <laughs> thanks you know, for having me. I'm like, I will, I've wanted to do it, but it's it's the timeline that yeah. we really well, we made it happen. That's good. <laughs> yeah. so, well done to us. Yeah. So hope hope you know all the best to your Noah's adventure and hope it will be the brand that you vision it to be. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and all the best for everything that you do. And hopefully we'll, we can sit down again when your your brand is there, uh -huh. and we can talk about how you know how we got there, how you got there. Definitely, yeah? one day. <laughs> well, thanks for coming. And yeah. Thank you. Well, good luck to you as well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much for watching through to the end. Really appreciate you taking your time out of your day. I hope that this episode has given you something of value. I hope that this episode has inspired you. Whether you've been with us for a long time or whether you've just come across us. If this episode or any other episode has made any difference in your life or has inspired you in any way, then please, please let us know. Tell us write to us, message us, comment below, tag us and most importantly please share and subscribe. I can't wait to bring another inspirational individual to you all in our next episode. Until then, take care and have a productive, positive and inspirational week.